Talk Radio here. I'm Kevin O'Sullivan in for Ian Collins today down on to, on College Green for the state opening of Parliament uh, where Her Majesty delivered a 10-minute speech outlining uh, Boris Johnson and the Tories' vision for the next few years. Now, obviously, we've been through some tough financial times uh, and uh, something, somebody's got to pay uh, for the state we're in, to be honest with you, and we are in a bit of an economic state. Uh, and the person who's going to pay for that, uh, dear listeners, and viewer uh, is of course you the taxpayer us the taxpayer so very pleased now to be joined by the chief executive of the taxpayers alliance john o'connell welcome john hi kevin good to be here uh, now uh, part of the speech today s appeared to say something very unconservative which was uh, to pay for everything we're going to tax the rich yeah, they, um, it was alluded to that those who could afford it and bigger businesses would have to um, pay a bit more in order to help repair the finances after the pandemic. But of course, as we know, corporations don't really exist to pay taxes. Your, your TV doesn't pay the TV license. Um, corporations are a bundle of contracts. And who ends up paying the tax? It will be the consumer through higher prices. It will be the workers through um, lower wages than they otherwise could have had because of corporation tax hikes. Um, and it will be investors with um, lower return to um, their investment, which is bad for productivity and bad for the economy. So these, um, it, it's easy to say that the rich will pay a little bit more and big companies should pay a little bit more, but it ends up hitting you, I, everybody else in the shops. So, yeah, so you, me, uh, richer people, we all, uh, we're all going to have to pay a bit more tax to pay for uh, the economic uh, sort of pit that we're in. We've uh, descended to a very low level. Of course, there are lots of things we're still paying for. There's a reality collision coming our way when they stop furloughing everyone. Uh, we still have to collide with reality. So the expenditure is going to get more and more. Someone's got to pay for it. So that seems to be us. Could you not argue in terms of tax that one thing that could pay for it would be the government finally getting to grips with corporations like Amazon paying their fair share because they're not paying their fair share right why doesn't the government try to get money from the likes of amazon instead of you and me yeah it's a really interesting point and it, it speaks to a broader problem with the tax system more generally which is very complicated full of loopholes which um, those with sort of high-flying accountants can take advantage of but again the um, normal worker on paye salary um, certainly can't so um, the answer lies in simplifying the tax system Kevin really and, and that's a, a big job but um, you know if you do simplify the tax system you eliminate loopholes and you not only sort of um, make it fairer in principle you make it seem to be fairer and I think that's really important to build trust in a tax system that everybody is seen to be paying their way and that can only be done through getting rid of loopholes. And we've listened to uh, various governments for a long, long time saying we're going to plug this gap. We're going to make Amazon pay their way. You know, we're going to make Facebook pay their way. They keep saying it. It never, ever happens. It, you must talk to members of the government about this issue. Is it your impression that this time they might finally get real about it or is it just more hot air? It's always well-intentioned and that's, that's part of the problem. They, they do mean it when they say it. But again, you know, the, the more that they put sticking plasters onto the tax system, it's, it's a game of whack-a-mole. You know, you, you close one lo loophole, they'll, they'll exploit another somewhere else. So, again, um, that erodes trust in the tax system, which is really crucial. And the only, only way you really address this is not with one-off pieces of legislation here and there and then changing it again the next year. You have a simpler tax system, eliminate loopholes, and everybody knows um, the, the playing field for the next 10, 15 years in advance, which is good for certainty. Let's talk about uh, you know, some of the fundamentals, really. You know, you're here to represent the British taxpayer. We pay tax, the government spends our money, essentially. Uh, why do the go does this government in particular feel that it can get away with, under the cover of lockdown, spending a fortune, turning every city and every town in this country into some sort of open-air cycling velodrome? I mean, why did they, how can they do that? We didn't vote for that. Why do they take our money and do this? And how can we stop them doing that, John? It's a really, really interesting question. I, I, I think it's, it's part of this mindset, often, as you say, based in London and, and bigger towns in the country, most of the country drives cars to work even um you know uh, journalists in london and you know um, politicians and bureaucrats in london quite often take trains or they cycle and all these other um, ways to get into work so the focus tends to be on those modes of transport but actually most people drive to work and i think that that disconnect between how most people live um partly drives it and of course 
Cycling's fine. You know, it's a, it's a reasonable method to get around a town if you're two or three miles away from somewhere. Fine, fine, fine. But the people who do cycle often tend to be quite zealous about that, that mode yeah. of transport. And with it, they often control levers of power and they control pots of taxpayers' cash. And th that's why you end up with um, these situations where they're digging up roads and for cycle lanes that you know, yeah. sometimes nobody uses. I'll tell you what, I was on the M1 the other day in the fast lane on my bicycle, and I don't recommend that to <laughs> anyone. No, that's a joke, folks. I wasn't doing that. Uh, uh, but uh, what about also in terms of what Boris thinks he can get away with spending our money on? Uh, his green industrial revolution. No one voted for it, as far as I can work out. No one wants it, apart from him and his partner. Uh, he's going to spend zillions, you know, building floating windmills and turning a, this place into a green paradise. He's, he says it's going to create 250,000 jobs. Not going to be too good uh, when we lose about 2 million when we come out of f furlough. So, uh, again, how, how do they think they can get away with this? Uh, well, I, I'd imagine it's the 80-seat majority that they currently have. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, they are getting away with it, aren't they? <laughs> but uh, yeah, you're, you're right. In, in the bigger picture, this is going to be a big spending government. There's no doubt about it. We can see it um, with um, every announcement that they make. On the green stuff, um, I, again, there's this disconnect between what happens here in Westminster on this sunny college green and what happens in towns and villages all across the country where people really care about their bins being collected, they care about graffiti, they care about litter on their streets. That's what the, the environment basics, means the to them. The basics, yeah. And that's all good stuff, and that's, that's um, really what people want tackled. But, you know, in the bigger picture, tackling climate change, whatever you want to call it, innovation is doing a lot behind the scenes. The private sector is coming on leaps and bounds in terms of, you know, uh, cleaner jet fuel for planes, all of this kind of stuff. Let the boffins in the private sector solve the problem over the longer term. Yeah, and the, the problem with the politicians is they go around saying, yeah, we've done focus groups, we've talked to people, they all really care about the environment. Well, if you ask someone, do you care about the environment? No one turns around and says, no, I couldn't give a damn about it. hope the planet's destroyed tomorrow. And no one will say this. Uh, the truth is uh, climate change and uh, global warming, all that stuff is not the priority for most people, is it? Well, and again, what do most people want in their town? A nice green space, exactly. um, you know, nice looking parks, trees, you know, that, that's all good Simple stuff. It's stuff, part yeah. of the same agenda, yeah. but bringing it down to what matters to people in their towns and villages is, is, is much more important. Uh, one last question, John. Uh, it's a bit esoteric, uh, but there was a story at the weekend about a school chaplain uh, who basically got hounded out of his job uh, because he clashed uh, with the kind of LGB lobby at his school. Uh, the, his school had brought in an organisation. It's a charity, actually, called Educate and Celebrate LGBTQ. I think the Q stands for questioning or something. Uh, it's a big, it's a capital L, capital G, capital B, capital T, small Q. So Q's not as important as the, uh, as the rest of the acronym. Uh, uh, now, it turns out the government has given this organisation. They go into schools and they make sure it's inclusive. All the kids know about uh, gay rights and all the teachers are well versed in these important modern uh, outlooks. Uh, and it turns out the government's given them 250,000 quid. Why is the government giving this organisation that amount of money? Very difficult to answer that question. I wouldn't know why, but they shouldn't be doing so, um, I think is the short answer. I think, um, again, it, it's <laughs> 250,000 doesn't sound like a lot when you're talking about billions here and millions there, but it's a lot of money, right? Um, you think how many families handed over their money in tax to pay for that. Um, and uh, what, what do most people think about when they're thinking about their children in school? They want their children to learn to respect any, everyone, regardless of where they come from, regardless of their creed or colour or opinion. That, that's, it, that's really important stuff. But, you know, I, it, it's the same with this unconscious bias training. Yep. You know, the government... Um, by, the way, by the way, talking about uh, across the road here in Parliament, uh, they got the unconscious bias trainers in and every MP was required to uh, attend this course. Mm -hmm. I mean, to be fair... Uh, if you didn't really didn't want to, you didn't have to. But the vast majority of MPs were required to take this course. Uh, cost a lot of money. Uh, that system is completely discredited. Again, hmm. our tax money wasted on this nonsense. Yeah, we we uncovered at the Taxpayers Alliance four hundred thousand pounds worth of that spending, uh, working with some MPs and. You know, w number 10 actually issued a statement saying they were going to um, stop doing those courses um, in, in certain Question respect, B, John, why did they ever start? Good, good, good question. And I think that, again, uh, th lots of civil servants working in silos, you know, with access to lots of taxpayers' money, um, following trends that they might see on Twitter or social media, that, again, 
it's been a theme throughout this conversation, right? Complete disconnect from the rest of yeah. the country. It's not important to to most people in the country. In fact, it's worse than not important. Is that they disagree with stuff like critical race theory and mm. unconscious bias, and they s and you know, fine. If you want to subscribe to it, subscribe to it, but don't use taxpayers' money to yeah, do don't so. Don't use our money. John, you do very good work. Thank you so much for your Thanks, time. Kevin. John O'Connell, Chief Executive of the Taxpayers' Alliance.